Hey, hi everyone. So this is Vinod here, and today it's been a very long time, and I'm coming on a live stream, and uh, uh, this is because of a very critical vulnerability that has resurfaced on the internet. So I thought it's a good time that I come back and talk a little about that. Before we get started, I do want you to take this material only for research and educational purposes. and any skills or techniques that you might have learned or acquired from this material should be used only at your own discretion these materials are only to make a positive impact on our cyber lives and not cause harm to anyone whatsoever uh, hi everyone so this is vinod here and uh, today i am going to be talking about a very serious flaw that has actually shaken the internet right every single person be it it or a non it are talking about this vulnerability and after a very long time i actually notice uh, times you know the times magazine has reported a technical vulnerability on their uh, magazine can you imagine times writing a, a you know vulnerability about a technical vulnerability in their magazine and this has actually happened after uh, two popular uh, such incidents that have happened in the past one is heart bleed vulnerability it was very very serious vulnerability and the other one is popularly called the shell shock vulnerability right so after that i think uh, this particular vulnerability that i'm going to be talking about has actually taken the place or importance because of the severity that it has brought to the limelight right so what is this vulnerability that we are talking about this vulnerability that we are talking about is called log 4j what is log 4j i am sure many of you might have heard about this or many of you have worked on this right what is log 4j what is log 4j all about let's let's ha have a quick uh, deep dive into what is this all about right apache log 4j is a tool or popularly called a library which is often used for logging purposes right for logging purposes when i say logging purposes uh, say for example these are libraries that has the extended flexibility to write data to your logs right with certain features and it's very fast reliable and as as you can see the small write up it says log 4j is a reliable fast flexible logging framework or popular in api written in java which is distributed under all the license okay uh, log 4j is a popular logging package written in java and it's also now ported in c c++ c sharp perl python ruby on rails etc because of the popularity right why do we need a logging platform say for example i i just want you to think of this say you have a website okay say i have a website called vinod.com and you visit my website right when you visit my website you are actually creating a log entry in my site in my server logs yes or no there when you talk about logs that there, there are usually three types of popular logs number 1 you have the access log number 2 you have the error log and number 3 you have the application log right so what are we going to be talking about access log is just you try to access me access my ip address or access vinod.com vinodsendel.com from your system i will now need to have a list of log entries which say who accessed my server right that's called the access log the error logs are anything that the uh, where uh, there the, the, the application created a error or the application broke or any kind of error logging uh, you know uh, uh, technique can be stored onto a log for resolving right for troubleshooting later on right whenever you use any application with verbose mode enabled right if you ha have you ever noticed verbose mode enabled they usually give parameters with the command line utilities with saying hyphen v or hyphen hyphen v right what does verbose mode do verbose mode simply gives a lot more log entries like you have switched on a debug mode right so that's called the verbose entry so all of these can be stored onto a log file which can be used for a later reference for troubleshooting say in case your application goes down you want to identify why it went what was the cause and how to fix it you need to have a uh, log uh, logging system so apache log 4j was actually you know instrumental in giving that right so it is a logging framework and majorly to store information 
as a log files right so that's that's a major and uh, it it was uh, it is primarily a java based uh, library and now ported into multiple forms right okay let's see the next one where has this particular uh, log 4j been used this library where where do you think it has been used in today's world every single java application where you can think about where a logging is used uses log 4j right whenever we talk about java right why is java so widespread right when we are talking about operating system the world right world consists of majorly three popular operating system majorly three popular operating system i am talking about consumer operating system you have windows you have linux and you have macintosh three popular operating system that's it and if you notice something common about this particular uh, uh, thing is all the three operating system have something called jvm jvm as in java virtual machine right which enables java application to be run on their respective operating system you can run a java application on a, a jar file on a macintosh a jar file on a windows and a jar file on a linux machine but you cannot run a exe file on all of these three platforms you can run a exe file only on a windows machine you can run a dot sh file only on a linux machine right likewise this jar file can be run on any of these operating system provided you have the jdk installed right this jdk i'm going to be talking about let me explain about that a little later and which version of java is vulnerable right but now getting back where is uh, this log 4j used log 4j is used in all popular potential areas starting from a minecraft server what is a minecraft server minecraft server is a popular game right where uh, it yeah, i'm just quoting this example because this minecraft server was vulnerable right where they have a i'm sure uh, you all know network gaming right you you can either play a standalone game or a network game when you play a network game you can interact with couple of your friends or across the world and play so when you play there are options like chat options and all other options where you could enter in a certain value a certain string or whatever right so that makes this exploit possible right okay forget minecraft server it is also available so look at that tweet post by apache did you know that mars 2020 helicopter mission is powered by apache <laughs> oh wow isn't it amazing now i'll tell you this mars rover right imagine this mars rover is now vulnerable to a java attack right and imagine an attacker who is very serious to hack into a mars rover can actually gain access to a remote code execution vulnerability on a you know terrestrial object imagine that right okay let us uh, go a little deeper into this right okay where is it used right before that uh, there is a popular company called snick they uh, it's pronounced as snick s y n k snick oh sorry s n y k snick what is snick into snick is a very popular saas product company when i say saas product company they are more of a source code a uh, scanning company they scan the source code and tell if there is a certain vulnerability or not right so having said this log 4j uh, library or tool has a code level issue i try to refer to a saas based product companies uh, advice advisory right so companies like snake companies like shift left company companies like sonar cube companies like check marks these are all uh, continuously working on scanning application both java php all kinds of plat platforms and languages and they issue a report saying these are all vulnerable right likewise uh, snick reported saying close to 60 percentage of the application are indirectly vulnerable to a java uh, i mean log 4j uh, vulnerability when i say indirectly let me exp uh, explain it a little later but before that i want you to understand they say 39.2 percentage of application they scan are directly vulnerable to the log 4j vulnerability imagine that okay L let us understand what is uh, indirect vulnerability say for example i just want you to imagine this whenever you write a c c++ code you start with the 
including a header file right you say hash include stdio.h hash include conio.h that they are called the header files right under stdio.h you have multiple functions that could be called into the program like you you have the printf for printing a particular value you have scanf you have other such functions likewise conio console input output like stdio it standard input output conio is console input output in console input output you have options of uh, functions like get s put s etc get care right these are all functions which are a part of this library now imagine there are application huge application written using these uh, libraries like uh, header files like conio.h stdio that imagine you can imagine you all have probably have done uh, c c++ programming way ago in your college days or school days but right now imagine if there is a vulnerability found on stdio.h header file imagine that header file has a vulnerability what happens it makes a whole internet vulnerable because they all have used stdio.h right so any uh, file that is actually imported stdio.h now becomes vulnerable if they use the derivative function of that in the program am i clear excellent now also there is a very interesting stat i saw which says log 4j vulnerabilities puts 41 percentage of the indian corporates at risk of potential hack right and i'll tell you i personally feel that this vulnerability will be like a landmark vulnerability in this cyber security space and this vulnerability will continue to stay for a very long time at least for another one and a half two years even though you try to mitigate it i you know considerably believe that this vulnerability is there to stay for a longer time right the reason i'll explain it a little later but yes okay let's go further look at what is the issue actually all about right let us understand the issue so before the issue i would like to highlight this particular vulnerability is uh, right now uh, having a cve id cve stands for common vulnerability exposure 2021 is a year and the vulnerability id is 44228 which is a sequential numbers right so uh, these are all maintained by mitre right mitre as an organization from the us federal so let us uh, uh, see a little more about this log 4j log 4j has something called the lookup feature very interesting feature right let let me explain what is the lookup feature it says the lookup feature uh, to download apps from external websites or java based applications too it allows you to uh do a request outside and uh, you know take a serialized object back as a input to you right now look at this very interestingly it says a normal log 4j scenario please pay attention to this particular screen this is a screenshot that i took from sophos labs popular antivirus company okay see here when you this is you okay this person is you okay you go to a website where it says get request index htm user agent is mozilla or chrome this is a regular request and this request goes to the server like this right in the access log you can see client which is probably my ip address index.html chrome or firefox whatever right this is how it is but imagine i am an attacker okay imagine this scenario i am an attacker what i am doing is uh please pay attention instead of get slash index.html and the user agent which says chrome if i change my user agent to something like this jndi service attacker whatever right i will explain you what is jndi but please understand whatever is being passed here as a user agent is not understood by the server as a user agent to store it but understood as a command that is to be executed in the uh, you know server side and the output of that will be stored onto the log am i clear which means there is something that's getting executed not knowing that it is a string but executing it thinking it is a function am i clear 
uh, in that way it is possible to exfiltrate certain very important data like uh, AWS access key ID. Imagine that you just change your uh, user agent and you get the remote server's uh, access key, AWS access key. Wow. Okay. Now let us understand what is this JNDI, right? J JNDI stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface, right? For example, uh, you, you can see here Java application co communicates with the J JNDI API and that in turn can communicate with the LDAP, DNS, other popular uh, services and respective protocols. And they will get the output from them back again to the JNDI API and that API will communicate it back to the Java application. So it can either be used for logging or can be used for the internal conception of the application itself, right? Okay, let's understand a little more. Uh, JNDI allows Java to store objects in remote location and serialize them to your JVM. Am I clear? Serialize J them to your JVM. Uh, please pay attention here. This is a Active Directory request. Very clear, simple Active Directory request where it is a LDAP protocol. What is LDAP? Lightweight Directory Access Protocol where uh, there is a LDAP server, right? And this LDAP server, if you pay attention, it is actually doing a query saying O equal to Vinod, C equal to IR, which is probably like a query to against my profile, Vinod profile, right? Uh, and getting the information as a serialized object, right? Now let us understand. This obviously can be disabled. And in fact, I would encourage you to disable it but it is not removed from Java yet. This is not the vulnerability. This is actually a feature that is offered through Java, right? And Java never depreciates anything as much as I am aware. Java, Java have never seen something getting depreciated. They only keep adding and if there are certain vulnerabilities, etc., the vulnerabilities will stay and they will go to the new uh, version where that version will have that fixed, right? Uh, and uh, the reason why uh, Java does not depreciate anything probably is for backward compatibility. I'm, I'm not too sure. And uh, something that's very interesting is say 50 years ago or 40 years ago, if you or your uh, uncle, auntie, whoever at that point in time was working on Java, that Java code will still be relevant, can still be compiled using the latest version of Java compiler as well. Right? That's the most interesting part. Right? And uh, this lookup feature that I'm talking about, LDAP uh, colon slash slash, the LDAP server IP and the port number and all that, this feature came into existence uh, from 2013, right? It was actually a lookup feature right now called the flaw. It was introduced in 2018 uh, uh, and right now exploited in 2021, right? And if you see the CVE ID, it says CVE. 2021, which means it was identified this year, right? Okay. Please pay attention. Let me explain you a little more about that, right? Uh, say this is Java function where you have a, lo a logger dot error. My name is, there are two curl brackets, right? Otherwise popularly called the curlies. When you have open close curls together, it's called curlies. So, uh, curlies and you have a string called Vinod Central. When it stores this data into a log, right, log file or database, the data will actually say, my name is colon Vinod Central. Am I clear? Instead of that uh, brackets, the curlies, you will have the data called Vinod Central as a data stored into the DB. This is something that we are very clear. As per Java, this is how the log4j actually works, the library actually works. Right now, what we are going to do is, the actual exploitation happens instead of that string called Vinod Central, I put a function uh, where you say dollar JNDI colon LDAP. As I told you, uh, JNDI can work with multiple other protocols like LDAP, DNS, etc. Right now, we are doing a query against a LDAP server. Uh, and whatever, right? So what happens is instead of printing that as a string, it executes that data and the output of that as comes as an object, serialized object back to the application. Am I clear? 
and that is where the flaw actually happens right look at this uh, logger dot error the third uh, example my name is instead of that i'm saying dollar env environment underscore valuable which will now throw me the environment variable data back again to me am i clear the environmental variable data of the remote server will come back to me right and it will be stored in the log server okay what are my thoughts uh, for me it also resembles to something very interesting that used to happen earlier and this vulnerability does not seem very new to me it does not feel new to me because there have been very similar vulnerabilities in the past but this is specific to a popular uh, library and that is why it is blown out of proportion right okay please take your phone just say asterisk hash 06 hash let me do this and right when i do this it shows me my imei number of my phone it shows two imei number because i have two sim cards right likewise if you see here it says asterisk hash 06 hash right when i type this you can actually see one sim card or ima to two uh, sim card holders and hence two imei number right okay this is fine this is understood imagine i have a qr code which has the data tel colon asterisk hash 06 hash imagine i scan using my qr scanning application the data that i have entered onto the qr code is tel colon asterisk hash 06 hash what will happen then if i scan the qr code itself it will read it as tel colon asterisk hash 06 hash where the tel colon means taking your dialer telephone dialer and putting that asterisk hash 06 hash into the dialer right and hence I'm sure this is how you put it on a HTML. You say tell colon this one. And if you have Skype or any other such application, when you click on it, it will open through Skype because the Skype application now knows that tell colon means uh, telephone protocol and is now to be handled by Skype. Okay, now again, uh, this is where the actual exploit happens, right? This is where the actual exploit happens. Now let us understand uh, I put a LDAP server in vinodsendal.com colon 123 environment uh, AWS access ID slash environment AWS secret access key, which means I am going to have the data in my log of both of it. How scary it is, right? And to me, it looks very similar to the popular SQL injection vulnerability, but a little... Uh, you know if you have to rename it properly it is a log injection vulnerability all these are getting into your logs right and uh, the, the, those days you have this popular attack vulnerability called the crlf attack cr stands for carriage written lf stands for line feed carriage written line feed attacks right these are all popular attacks today we have for log4j vulnerability we have a very wonderful working exploit called the log for shell which means that this vulnerability will uh, you know uh, will be used by an attacker to exploit and that exploit can return back a remote code shell of the server right so yeah that that's about it and uh, uh, i i'll just quickly show a very interesting demo or a demo or a small video please pay attention to this video and here in this uh, you can see Cosmo this uh, this is where you have this log for shell proof of concept right here there is a small video that I'm gonna play please see this video very interesting video on the right hand side you can actually see there is a place where you can enter in a username and a password instead of the username field what are they entering in jndi ldap localhost 12138 which is a port number of ldap slash a which is the exploitation code right let us see what happens he enters some password which is maybe right or wrong password material right now look at this we got back a shell we got a reverse shell back from that particular system to our 
rogue LDAP server. Am I clear? And hence, we have a remote code execution permission of the remote uh, server which is running JDK or uh, J log4j lesser than 2.16. Because 2.16 is the version that is right now fixed, right? That does not have this vulnerability anymore, right? And uh, this is another very interesting uh, video where please pay attention. Right side, you are playing a game called uh, the Minecraft. And in when you are playing this game called Minecraft, please pay attention. There is an option where you could enter in your name or chat, right? Type in anything that you want in chat so that rest of them, whoever is playing there can actually see that. What are we going to enter? We are going to enter this exploitation code. This exploitation code, which is JNDI LDAP colon whatever slash A. We are going to enter it here. Let us see. Wow. When we enter that exploitation code in this chat option, we get a reverse shell back from that Minecraft server. We have the remote code execution done on the Minecraft server and you get a reverse shell back, right? This is very, very scary. And I think uh, when you have a listener running, you will be able to get it. And uh, this is a link of the shells POC. It's very interesting. Uh, however, I would strongly suggest, please go ahead uh, and uh, make sure you, excuse me, yeah, so make sure you have your log4j libraries updated to the latest version 2.1.6 uh, and uh, it is very important not just to follow these kind of advisories or news but also to please do implement them because you you may think that your application does not use any Java libraries and you are safe. But the chances are you might be using a third party API. That third party API might be using a Java library which will make your application also vulnerable to this particular log4j issue. Right? I hope you had something to learn back from this uh, particular uh, thing. So such a pleasure talking to all of you. Looking forward in the next video. Thank you very much.